the word of the day is Twama. Twama. Oh. Yep. Hi, guys. It is Monday. We are going to be playing a D&D game that has dragons in it that, you know, we'll get into it in a minute. So <laughs> I'll do my recap in a sec. <laughs> So hi, welcome to the show. I I DM this game that's published by Wizards of the Coast. It's the Tyranny of Dragons campaign, uh, published uh, under the fifth edition setting. So now that you know the mechanics, even though I go by rule of cool ninety percent of the time. So with that, do we have any fun announcements? Uh, anything going on that anyone wants to talk about? The links down below. Links are down below. There, there's some cool links down below. Some there's cool, some cool links down below. I think cool Jeremiah books. has something he wants to say. I have something to say. I do. <sighs> it's more of a, it's more of an argument for you non-flat earthers out there. Oh. I will prove you wrong that the Earth is flat. I hate your words. Yes, Earth is made up of seventy percent water. Mm -hmm. And it isn't carbonated, so indeed it is flat. It's not wrong. Not wrong. It's not wrong. As a person who is currently drinking Bye. carbonated water, <laughs> Bye, better, everybody. Pour it, better pour it on the earth so it becomes around again. <laughs> I think patience has left the game for good. So I understand. R.I.P. Yeah. R.I.P. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll. I guess uh, Ollie will be taking over Patience's position as the party <laughs> child. Cordelia. But does that the one meniscus HP on cause it to curve, though? Therefore, it is a circle. Is the moon a carbonated drink? I'm going to need you to get your neuro spicy brain out of this joke. <laughs> like the Earth, it's not that deep. No. <laughs> The, uh, the moon doesn't have water on it, so there's no carbonation in it. No, but I, mean, I heard it has cheese. I mean, there is water <laughs> on the moon, but that's besides the point. <laughs> well, how would what, how would Tebus have reacted to like someone being like, the moon is made out of cheese? Uh, he would beg his father nonstop to take him there immediately. Oh my gosh. Fucking cast plane shift to get to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> and then when Grayson is trying to explain to him that no, you cannot go to the moon, Phoebus's immediate reaction being, what good is your magic then if you can't take <laughs> your baby boy to the moon? Fucking oh my God. gaslighting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Second bard spell that Phoebus ever learned in his life was suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to say gaslight? Gaslight gatekeep. <laughs> It's the same nope. thing. Hard boss. It just, it's just, it's still gaslighting. It's just titled nicely. Gaslight <laughs> suggestion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't see the difference. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, with that, let's go ahead and do our introductions. Mm -hmm. Hi, I am Vic, your DM, the ga Gaslight Gatekeep girl boss of the game. And Tabitha, who you playing today? I hate, I hate that so much. But I hate that too. Thank you. I am playing everything and everyone, including your enemy. Yeah, she from here on. I, I, last I, time. Oh. I will apologize in advance for this coming arc. Uh, you are going to get gaslighted a lot. Sorry. <sighs> I, bet. I figured as much. Hi, everybody. I'm Tabitha. I will be playing Patience slash Rosemary, the Tiefling Sorcerer slash ranger right all right all right and uh jesus who are you playing today hi guys i am playing tarsius channington um a, a a good old chad who just wants to do a good old chad um barbarian minotaur the fighter chaddest of chads. the chaddest of chads no i mean that title can only be presented to his father i mean there's nobody else Would it I could technically be his grandfather who's the chad of chads uh do i need to write lore on chaddington senior now can i can i give I a can see i give a chaddington family tree oh. can i give you a personal headcanon on chaddington senior 
God. Yeah. If if, if Chattington Sr. had to be played by any real world, world actor, I'd believe it'd be Nick Offerman. <laughs> yes. He's thinking. <laughs> He's thinking. His fingers are steeple. There's stinks. The gears are turning. <laughs> A one shot in the past. What? No. Oh, did <gasps> did Chattington Sr. know Tabin? One more time. Did Chattington Sr. know Tabin, Grayson's father? The Tatterick of Tatterricks? <laughs> I don't know. There's Lord that we went, discuss. They probably went They're, to the same college, too. <laughs> I'm going to be real. They probably they probably have uh, been acquaintances a few times in a, in a hunting lodge for, like, you know, the gentleman hunting parties. Senior probably. Yeah. The senior Grayson probably. Knows, Grayson knows Chaddington. Yeah. Chad. <laughs> Chadwick. Okay. I'm gonna get too lost into this lore. Here we out. We'll get into the rabbit hole. Chaddington Senior is Charles Chaddington. No. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck Chaddington. Come on, Chuck it's, Chaddington. It's oh, Charleston. Chuck. It's Charleston <laughs> Chadsworth. Chaddington. I love that. The lore on this character is so deep. Okay. Chuck Chuck what was the Chuck <laughs> uh, Nick, Nick Offerman, Offerman could be a Chuck. He could be a Chuck. He's probably one of my favorite actors in anything oh, ever. Yes. Because of just That's how true. stoic he is. I love him. Agreed. Hey, Jeremiah, who are you playing today? Charles. No. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> Chuck. Uh, play Cordelia Chaddington. No, Medusa Fighter Rogue. Nice, nice, very nice. That is in door, um, Death's Door at the moment. Almost there anyway, at least. She's on the welcome mat. The low <laughs> HP bar is ringing. Yeah, it's beating right now. Beating, 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 and glowing beating. red. <laughs> hey, Sydney. Who are hey, we playing today? What? Uh, it's, oh, dead it's, Bob. Huh, rip. Rip, dead Bob. Mm. Um. Yes. Uh, I'm Sydney. I'm playing Nicodemus D. Hawkins. Uh, Hawk, the human fighter. Um. Whose parents? Whose parents just died because they were ripped apart by. Yeah. Mechanical dragons that we had to fight and a six headed dragon just carried off his little sister. Yeah. Yep. So we're not having a good time. Swallowed her and then carried how, her off. How 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 bad of a time? We're all about to find out. All right. <laughs> Can't wait. And last but not least, uh hey Lynn, who are you playing today? <laughs> Before I do that, hear oh. me out. Okay. A DILF game with all of our characters' grand uh, grandfathers for <laughs> Curse of Strahd. Done. When? Yes. <laughs> Listen. But that means I... Hawk has to survive this game. <laughs> <laughs> just all gentlemen DILFs. Lynn, Lynn just really wants to play Tavin. <laughs> Lynn, Lynn, Lynn knows that we're going to commission her from the pictures because <laughs> no one draws hot guys as well as Lynn does. <laughs> I don't have to be Tavin. I can be Tavin's father. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Going, going all the way up the, oh, the, the tree. Digger. That's where Phoebus got his middle name from. Vic, you can be Erian and Jayon's father. Uh, oh. <laughs> ooh. I can't like that. That's fun. Anyway. We'll discuss that later. Anyway, hi. Holy shit. <laughs> Dude, here's Lane, Jesus, the Dilf machine. Yeah. Jesus is over there. He's got his arms crossed like Dilf, 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 Dilf. <laughs> Just, they're, hmm. the, the Dilfs are flying. It's the next, it's the Things next, are flying. It's the next new game. Instead of Oops All Kobolds, it's Oops All Dilfs. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Not, yes. <laughs> we we'll can't, we can't, we can't call ourselves Dungeons and Daddies because that's already a podcast. Yes. <laughs> A I mean, spectacular one, nonetheless. Right. Shout out anyway, to Dungeon. Anyway, it could be with the dragons I'd like to fight. <laughs> Lynn, who are you playing? <laughs> I'm playing uh, Father Larkspur, the uh, tiefling cleric. 
of any matter. Synonymous with daddy, yes. <laughs> Larkspur Dilf. That's father Dilf. Your father... First, so, first of all, he elf. needs to reach Dilf age, Lynn, and that's a challenge I pose to you. He's never going to be a Dilf, though. I know. Oh, are you sure? <laughs> all right. With that, <laughs> let's go ahead and roll that 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 intro. All right, rolling. Daddy game. Anyway, we're all we're all hopped up on daddies now. So I mean, we're hopping on a daddy. Hey. So <laughs> that's what Grayson says when he w wants to retire to his room. Oh my god! I'm starting the counter early. Yeah. Oh 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 oh! It's like it's yeah. like that like that Dr. Seuss book. Hop on pop. I'm gonna <laughs> bring that fucking dragon back. I swear <laughs> to God. Uh, it's, it's a roll. All right. It's a roll. So you all find yourself currently you know what we're gonna just hop right into it <laughs> it's like where's I'm the dragon <laughs> I'm, gonna be I'm, gonna be I'm gonna be completely real with y'all I had very little prep today I was just simply there's the Hawkins home bop alright so here we are so this is no longer here You all find yourselves amongst the wreckage of what was Hawk's childhood home. Having been torn asunder by the battle that you unfortunately had to wage between creatures that were once Hawk's parents. You were brought here on a mission uh, to retrieve the wizard Iskander from this red wizard's keep known as Zonthal Tower. And it was through that journey that it brought you towards Hawk's home. And it was upon your first arrival where you were met with the blue dragon Lenathon, as he and a few band of cult band of cultists were uh, moving supplies as well as people. And you found that some of those people were people that you had known, Hawk, your sister Helene, uh, Mrs. Una of the Lucky You, and Eustace Benton, who is an old retired veteran. Thinking that they were being stolen away, you saved them, you brought them back, you managed to capture your own uh, prisoners to interrogate. Unfortunately, one of them perished through a curse that was instilled upon him by the Archduchess Zariel. The other you managed to save uh, at the price of him losing his tongue. And now you have Olithan Cyanrath, who is now a very enthusiastic follower of Larkspur. As you all journeyed out to look for the Wizard's Tower and to look for signs of the Blue Dragon, you were led by this uh, Dwarven Ranger named Net that was courting Helene. But 
at the end of your journey to the Dragon's Lair, you discovered that Nenth was Lenanthon. And Tiamat had charged him with overseeing something awful. This was something that had been in place for a while now, but after some comments made within the Frozen Sea, the Sea of Moving Ice, she wished for Hawk to suffer. So she asked for Lenanthon to find his family, to target his family, and to have them taken away to the tower and have God's knows what done to them. As you all returned, you found uh, the hometown Binatu and burning away as these draconic abominations and these undead corpses were shuffling about through the town, tearing apart anyone in their path. They, you also saw glimpses of red robes moving through the, through the town. Hawk, you made your way to your family's home where there was a scene. Your father locked in the spare room, your mother and sister cowering. You managed to coax out some bit of the truth from them. But by then it was already too late as your father started to expunge what was afflicting him. This basically a many-eyed draconic monster called an eye drake. And as that left his body, his body, now basically a husk, was turned into this hollow dragon creature. The same happened with Hawk's mother. And as for Helene, you, who ended up getting trapped under some rubble, you guys fought as best as you could, defeated the eye drakes, but it was by that point that a six-headed Dracohydra made its way to the house. She landed, announced herself as a more or less a crude vessel for the Dragon Queen herself. As she pretty much took Helene, swallowed her, and then completely decimated the rest of the home as well as Hawk's parents, as you all were pretty much helpless to her power. And we're going to pick up where we left off, where you are all still amongst the wreckage of the home as it's smoldering away. The corpses of what is left of Hawk's parents strewn about the property. So, what is everybody doing? Bidding, 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 bidding. Crying. Uh... <laughs> I, like, I think what we had, Hawk had kicked one of the, the, the things. Right. And yeah, he had just dropped. And he is crying. Like, this man is, like, hyperventilating crying. Like, we, we, are, we are spiraling fully into hysterics. Right. <clears throat> Rushing over to my sister. D -d 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 you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Pulling out a healing potion. Uh, she's just kneeled. Probably on the ground right now, just panting. Good. Uh, not really able to talk. Okay, pouring healing potion down your In throat. Shock. You didn't <laughs> tell me no. To doing it. She'll she'll gladly take it. Okay. Like while you're, you know, she will immediately grab that bottle, okay. drink it herself. All right. So did then you, you yeah. receive the full effects. I do not remember how much greater heals. That's the only ones that I have. Uh, let me look that up. Okay. As you do that. Clark will heal people too. They need it. Alright. 
So Lark is also offering healing for anybody that needs it. I'll take one. I wish what he's got. Hold on. He's got uh, mass care wounds. Ooh. Yeah, he can use it. He'll do mass care wounds. All right. So a mass care wounds as he, you say your, uh, you say a quiet prayer to your uh, patron Ilmater as this wave of this like gentle wave of relief just kind of like overcomes you all as you feel it seep into your bones and your soul as you inhale and it feels like you can breathe a little easier as your wounds start to heal up let's get the dice get your dice Jeremiah you're ready for 20 it's just pouring it down our throat okay um that, that should help and when I see that uh, our priestly friend is uh, doing a spell, I'm like, okay, so t- t- okay, that's gonna help. Um, gotta go over to the bodies that were originally Hawk's parents, and like, okay, just, just like not knowing what to do. They're supposed to turn back, right? Looking at the adults, they're supposed to turn back, right? Um, everyone gets, uh, six. Okay, uh, everyone gets 37 heals. Fucking damn. Nice. Very I'm nice. No longer bloodied. Oh, that will bring me to no bloodied, too. Goodness. Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh when Tarsius was saying those words, like they're supposed to turn back right. Uh, Cordelia getting the healing effects, starting to feel better. Will grab the dancing sword from the ground and just put her sho- her hand on Tarsi's shoulder, and she will just look at him and sway her head. No, she fakes her head now. Just, and... just no, just no words though. And the snake's also kind of shaking with her. Mm-hmm. As Tarsius, there doesn't seem to be any change happening as these broken heaps of, I believe I said bronze, are just collapsed in on each other. The only true remains of what was Hawk's mother is just what bit of blood is sprayed on the ground from when she initially changed. Um. Gotta look at the hawk shield. That's, that's the, the, the dragon god, right? They, they can fix this. If that's the, the evil dragon god and that's a good dragon god, then they should be able to reverse it, right? That's how that works, right? If you're a good person, that that they, they should fix it. That's what I was always told. That's how that works, Mr. right? Mr. Tarsius. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's not having a, a good really, time. Really, really powerful necromancy magic is the only thing that could probably do that sort of thing. Yeah, Hawk is not responding. Hawk is Hawk is just. Yeah, she's Crying. gonna actually. Patience is gonna like cautiously put a hand out and shake Hawk's shoulder, and just be like, "We need to check on everybody else back in town." Oh, the affairs. Hold on. Hawk is gonna shrug you off. And continue crying. At this point, he is, like, hyperventilating. And, like... He hasn't thrown up yet. But it's, it's starting to get to that place where we're about to make ourselves sick. 
it's one of those things where she's just going to kind of like grab at like the little pleats in her skirt. And she's going to be like, you know, I know you want to mourn, but we we don't have the time. She will uh, she will immediately stop patience. And uh, Cordelia will stop patience with those words and like, you can go. I, I can probably stay with him for a little bit. Check on the other people. Tarsius not being a person that neat can stand still for long because probably has a DD. Grass patient puts on head right oh <laughs> he just likes to jump. <laughs> <laughs> he just <laughs> likes to jump. Um like okay, we uh, we we need to find a, a necromancer, right? Let's let's go find a necromancer. No, oh. no, no. We need oh, to go also... back to town, we need to check on people in town. Okay, also, check on people, Tarsius. necromancer. So I'll also tells tell Tarsis, yes. don't forget the the baby. Baby necromancer point, point town. <laughs> point no, she, yeah, baby Patience is going to probably like be like, Tarsius, put me down really quickly so okay. she can go grab Gren. Okay. Because he's obviously probably scared. Yeah. One thing off the checklist, then two more things. As uh, Patience, no, you go it's... to collect Gren, you'll see he's like wedged himself like in the corner, like oh, in, a, in a little ball. As he's just like very low to the ground and just shaking. Yeah, she'll just pick him up and just in draconic, just she's kind of cradling him, just being like, "You, you did your best. We did our best." Roll me animal handling. Okay. What is my animal handling? Uh, okay, that's a plus three. Ooh, twenty-one. Okay. So you go to uh you reach out and you see as his ears kind of like airplane back and you can see he's like starting to like open his mouth to like uh hyperventilate very fast mm -hmm. and you kind of like give a little bit of distance knowing that he's tense so you just wait for him mm -hmm. to come to you and he'll eventually kind of scuttle towards you towards your knees and allow mm -hmm. you to pick him up yeah which she will and she'll just be trying to console him also in Draconic, just like, you know, you did your best, it's okay. I didn't expect you to... that was a lot. As the baby is just going to put his head into your shoulder and just stay there. Mm-hmm. Because he's a scared little baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She'll make her way back over to Tarsius and just be like, "I can, I can walk, I can walk as fast as I can. Okay. You don't have to carry me." Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm fast. Oh, um, okay, okay. But I say she's gonna be trying to also probably explain to, to Tarsius about like when I say necromancy, I don't mean like a necromancer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this can be a discussion that we have as we're going yeah, into town. Yeah. He's like anything that he can do to be like distracted is probably really good because, uh, like he can spiral into a depression real easy, and that's what he's trying not to do. He just wants to be helpful, and that's like I need to be helpful because that's, that's what I need to do right now. So that's all he's like, that's that's his mind be helpful. Which as she's explaining it's like you know maybe people back in town need help because mm -hmm. I don't know maybe we should go and check on uh, Miss Una yeah it's a good idea anyone that needs help we'll be there to help them and, and all this will be fixed we're going to fix it all everything can be fixed uh, yeah So, Larkspur, what are we doing? Oh, I cannot hear you if you're talking. <laughs> Sorry. Um, he's going he's gonna to go up to Hawk and just kind of 
priestly console him. Okay. And you, uh, you want to talk about it. Do he? <laughs> huh? I said, d d he's asking Hawk if he wants to talk about it. Uh... He is, we're still crying hysterically, but like, he's going to be able to like choke out in between like sobbing and he's literally just, it's, it's over and over. I did this. This is my fault. What? Jesus. I'm like, did someone say pickle? John comes up, you want a slice of pickle? And these pickles are like the size of like... Oh, they're the big ones that we bought. <laughs> Tense moment of the first day. Pickles! Um, got pickles for sale. I, know, I, did, I didn't think I just out of my hair pickle and I'm like, pickle? Oh. <laughs> pickle. Pickle. John's over here on stream offering you his pickle. Damn. <laughs> I mean, that's what the camera. This is like. a family stream. I'm just it's after <laughs> not in my Christian Minecraft server. <laughs> we should we should deep fry them pickles. Oh, oh. stop, <laughs> bro. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have that. to. All right, back Cindy, to we trauma. have a, we have, an, we have an adventure to do tomorrow. We do. Back to trauma. <laughs> Yes, sorry. That the whole pickle thing kind of broke the seriousness. My bad. <clears throat> yeah, no, he's literally just saying, was... choke out between sobs. Like, I did this. This is my fault. Why do you say that? Uh, he is going to be like, you heard. You heard them, the, the dragon thing. Which I can um, reinstate what she said, uh, since, uh, Lynn, you, you did miss that bit. Uh, oh. Pretty much stating... Da, 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 da. She said, do you like what I've done with your family? If I am to be a bitch, I suppose it was time for me to live up to such an honorable name. Oh. Basically, she was implying completely that it was uh, Hawk's. The reason that it was Hawk's fault because Hawk was the one that Hawk had off. decided to insult her. It was Hawk? He hawked off. Yeah. Because he was the one that insulted her by name, and so she took that personally. It's just business. As you tend to do, is a petty bitch. Mm hmm. So if you want dominion over living things, you're going to have haters. You need to get over that. <laughs> Can't please he's, everyone. God. He's going to kind of look around and just... We have something I can try. It's not ethical. But we can see if it would work. Hawk is going like, to look at him and be like, what? I can revive them. <laughs> One of them. Maybe. But you have to decide if these are actually your parents anymore. I'd hate Ooh. to uh, I'd hate to uh, revive something and have to fight it again. Hmm. How do we think of... What do we think of that? <laughs> Hawk is going to look at where his mom's remains are. And he's going to stare at it for a hot second. Uh, and the little, the little wheels are going to turn. Um, I can speak with the dead beforehand to see if um, he's in there, maybe. Uh, 
Uh, if it's just, just a bunch of roaring and growling, that's, then we know it's not the, probably not a good idea. Yeah, Hawk will take a big death, a big breath in, and he'll nod his head. You want to speak with them, or do you want me to just go ahead and arrive? It? See if it's her. Hold on. And is the is the mom this one? Uh, the no, mom is going to be uh, this one out here that you're sitting in front of. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. For, he'll cast, for obvious um, reasons, he did not go in on his dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he'll uh, he'll cast speak with Ed. Okay. So. For that, I'm going to need you to roll me. So how are you, uh, let me ask, how are you casting this? Are you doing this from a spiritual standpoint or a spell casting standpoint? Spiritual. Roll me religion. Oh, good. He's good at that. <laughs> Hope. Non nat 20. Okay. 18 plus 2. Roll me percentiles. Okie doke. Let me get my percentile dice. If I can find them. Tekken. Where the crap are all my dice? <laughs> <laughs> like, I have Lynn a giant jar I saw of them. dice. Lynn Lynn broken as well. I didn't it. break in. I was let in. <laughs> like a vampire. Oh, yeah, that's your mistake there. You invited her in. 84. Okay. So, Lark. I would like for you to describe to me how you cast Speak with Dead. What is your somatic ritual that you do? Um, I'm going to say his somatic ritual is that he takes one of his um, his red like ropes okay. that's bound on him, and he, he just starts tying knots into it as he does the verbal component. Okay. And he's also burning incense because that's the material you need. And he has okay. he has incense. He's incense for days. He has an incense block. It's priest pack. All right, as you set down your incense, uh, your your little incense block, you set, you light them. You will uh, light your five pieces of incense as you tie your knots, speaking your prayer to Ilmater to give voice to one who no longer has one. And as you do that, you kind of bow your head as you do during your ritual and you close your eyes. And when you open your eyes again, you feel like you'd never really open them. It's like you closed your eyes, you feel the the, the blackness of your lids consume you and when you raise your head up again you are still consumed by blackness as let me find another piece of music to use we're going to go with Hold on, this. So. When you look up the essentially construct that was crumpled in front of you, 
no longer stands there. Instead, you see a woman, Hawk's mother, just standing there, looking very scared. As she looks to you, Larkspur. Um, he'll... Is he standing or sitting? Uh, however you were performing your ritual. Uh, he was probably kneeling, so he'll he'll stand up. Okay. Kind of brush off and... his... His, uh... Priest attire. And Hawk, you watch as Larkspur stands from his kneeling position and dusts himself off. But Hawk doesn't see it. I just do. You you see her you see her. Okay. Hawk just sees what's before him, which is this crumpled heap of metal. Do I sense Hawk next to me? I will say if you reach a hand out to touch where you know he is, then yes. Yeah. Okay, he'll do that. Okay. He'll just grab his grab his arm. As he puts a hand on your arm, Hawk. Okay. Um, let's see. Five questions. Is what he will say to Hawk. Fuck. I hate, I hate, I hate this. Um. <laughs> he'll, he'll confirm to Hawk that it is her. He sees her. Um. Uh. Uh. I... Uh, damn it! I get put on the spot with this. Do you need me to come? Do you need us? You're back? welcome. Uh, yeah. Give me a second to come up with five questions. Okay. All right. So minutes. while so while that is happening, we'll come back to y'all on that. So, as for everyone else, uh, Cordelia, Patience, and Tarsius, what? What's the plan? Is Tarsius in patience? You were planning to make your way towards town, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, okay. Making our way back to the... Well, she wants to go back to the Lucky You. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Cordelia, what uh, what are you planning to do? Well, at first I was going to stay with a uh, hawk and then because of uh, Father Larkspur doing his thing, she was like, She's basically still worried of about his brother, so he will get she will catch up. Yeah. Which Ollie, Ollie will uh, kind of like uh, sidle up next to you, Cordelia, and he'll like politely tap you on the shoulder and like give you like a thumbs up, like just to say I I got, I got this. I can I can watch them. Yeah. Uh, then she will follow to go to the town. She will give you a little a little salute. As he stands well. sentry with his with his glaive. She will just do a thumbs up. <laughs> give, you, give you a thumbs up. It's like an awkward thumbs up. <laughs> <I'm> like, eh. <laughs> okay. Alright, so you all are going to go into town to go check on everything? Yeah. Alright. Do what we can. All right, what direction do you plan on taking? Uh, I guess almost a direct route. Um, yeah. Not really. Yeah. All right. I don't. Yeah, and just like beeline there. Yeah, you you can beeline there. Give me just a second to alter the map. I was going to say, if need be, Patience would even tell, like, I don't know how, 
bad the fires are, if they're still going or not. The fires are still ongoing. Like, you, if you look out down the road as you're making your way down, you'll see that the town is still, like, smoking and burning. The fires, unless they are actively put out, they don't look like they're going to be stopped anytime soon. It hmm. might spread, you know, to the rest of the forest from um, the looks of things. Do we still see any villagers that have been pretty much turned that are still stalking about? So roll me a perception, actually. As I get... Um, Seventeen. All right. So, what you are going to see... You are... Let me get these guys going. As Where did he go? Oh, I gotta find a buddy. Where did you go, sir? There you is. Okay, there we are. And then let me get you guys. Clippy and paste. All right. So you guys are cutting through the fastest route into town. So that would put you kind of on the main road cutting through as what you will see is a kind of like a skirmish going on and it looks like you're catching just the tail end of it as you see waves of town guards just kind of like pushing back and also uh you see eustace uh the new the newly formed eustace in his draconic hey. dreadnought uh form as they he's rallying the town's guard and they're kind of starting to push back uh, a lot of <clears throat> what has been attacking Benetuan. You have, from what you guys see, uh, a lot of the draconic aberrations have been slain. A lot of the big ones. And okay. what you see is the town's guard and Eustace starting to corner what's remaining, which is just a handful, a few um, red wizards, and then these droves of undead. Okay. And, uh, patience. You rolled the 17, right? Yes. Did anyone, uh, did anyone else roll perception for that? Uh, uh, throw a dice. The, I saw nothing because that was a natural one. I am. Smoke's kind of stinging your eyes and it's making Ow. water a lot. It's just like very hard to mm. see. White rabbits. Ow. Yeah, my, mine's a 14. 14, okay. Alright, so patience with the 17. Um, so, uh, what you will see is, in a lot of these undead, they look like they're dressed like, you know, simple townsfolk. One of them, however, is not. Oh. And I'm going to say it's going to be uh, this one back here. Okay. And that one looks to be wearing priestly robes familiar priestly robes i would say uh with the, the oh. reds the whites and the golds <laughs> oops as you see what was uh once the priest of lathander that um you saw at the lucky you is kind of shambling about with the rest of them oops Man, that's... what <laughs> welcome back on. welcome back I'm working really hard on my questions. I, no, I, okay. I am so proud of you for that. Now, um... Just an interesting detail. And... I'm assuming all the ones that... The tokens that are in red, those are wizards. Yeah, these guys... Right here is... The mm -hmm. wizard. Yeah, no, what, what they doing? <laughs> uh, it looks like they are trying to get the fuck out of Dodge. They, from the looks of things, they are mm -hmm. just 
you know, scattering and trying to recoup. So, mm. this isn't going to be a combat, uh-huh. so that we can do okay. this uh, mm-hmm. a little more cohesively. So what I'm going to do, this is going to be a skill challenge. Okay. And I'm going to ask each of you to present me with a skill. I want you to describe to me what you would like to use that skill for. And then we'll roll for it to see how we turn the tides on this skirmish as you guys are following up on this and joining the uh, Towns Guard of Binatuan in helping r- run out these uh, miscreants. I mean, as Patience would even probably put it to Tarsius and Cordelia, it's like, I know we need to get to the lucky you. Mm-hmm. But going by how everyone has been when it comes to uh, unsavory people that we've met, I know you like to keep one alive for questioning. No, I don't question them, but okay. Oh, sister. I know. I you know what I mean yeah, yeah, as a group. Yeah. Um. That's why I was like, oh. I just imagine Cordelia slowly, slowly lowering her her killing arrows, like alive. <laughs> no, Cordelia's not. Didn't hear that at all. Oh, perfect, perfect. He's in a yeah. ragey mood at the moment. Yeah. Patience. I know you said that this is a skill challenge, but I did have a spell I was planning on doing. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, you. Which one? This uh, one. <laughs> that one? So what is yeah. your skill that you're presenting me with? Um, I guess... You can use Arcana. gonna be... Yeah, that's what I was going to do, yeah. Arcana. All right, so what are you, you going to do? Oh, uh, she was going to Misty Step. Well, excuse me, no, it wasn't Misty Step. Because m- even with my um, my feet, I don't think I can get that far. You don't have feet, you have hooves. You know what I mean. I think... Um, uh, uh, patience you're maybe you're thinking this is like as a combat thing try to think of like what are you doing overall to assist with this yeah i know i'm just trying to well it's meant to be a challenge that's why it I makes know. you think <laughs> i know i know and i'm trying to do you want us what... to come back to you yeah come back to me all right Cordelia, Tarsius, do you have actions? I um, yeah. I was going to also use Arcana uh, in combination with uh, my magic missiles, but I'm going to leave Arcana to our magic user, also because they're no, no, no. intelligence. Don't worry, you don't need to do Arcana. I know what I'm going to do. Okay. Do you don't want me to use it, or you do want me to use it? You can use it. Okay, I'm going to use it uh, against my better judgment of my pluses with strength I'm a plus zero to intelligence so all right I'm gonna use Wait, arcana a I'm a wizard so I'm I wizard far off range I can shoot eight missiles there's a lot of zombos I'm just like trying to like like ping at them and like like hit them and distract them and then do damage and and that's that's all I, my my worry is I move close and just ping 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 that's like that's all I want to do I want to right. believe that Tarsi is somatic component for spell casting is he just makes bullhorns with his hands and just like <laughs> yeah shoots them forward yeah all right huh, so this is a straight roll because i got plus zero intelligence 19 oh bro that was an attack that was a crit all right so <laughs> eight magic missiles where are you directing them give me them pinpoints uh okay um so uh, a pew, pew, okay. two, okay. three, four, five, six, seven. You're looking like a priest, so no. And then eight. I'm All like, right, oh, so not that one. one that one two, looks a little, three. I don't know. And then bounce off the one behind them. Huh. <laughs> All right, where were the other one? Uh, Where'd you go? This one. Oh. 
And these guys, yeah. This guy. Ba ba da ba. Ba da ba. Six out of six. Where's the other two? This one. That one, okay. And this one. Okay. Bam. Bam. And then uh, after my, my missile, like. Tactical missile dot. Like, wow. I'm powerful. It's like, <laughs> like the fucking. Goddamn Mandalorian with the little, like. Little little bird sprays. Yeah. Just... yeah, pretty much. Perfect. All right. That is a, a success. Okay, Cordelia. What's your move? I'm using my superior agility. All right. For, for acrobatics to basically kind of Tarsius did with his magic missile, but using my sword instead, just kind of running around the battlefield. All right. But also, I have a direct line to one of the red wizards. Oh, all right. Uh, all right. And she did not hear whatever Patience was trying to say about keeping one alive. Did she not hear, or is she ignoring Patience? <laughs> the snakes oh, she, were just conveniently she, covering uh, her ears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they coiled into earmuffs. Perfect. David Hisselhoff. I need to roll. Ear. David Hisselhoff is in your ear, like, do it, do it, yes. do it. Yeah, roll me your acrobatics. That is, I rolled a fourteen plus my pluses, so twenty-four. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> twenty-four. Our acrobatics. Twenty-four. So that is a very successful move, and you're taking your direct line to him. Like, I'm running through. If I see an enemy kind of next to me, I will kind of swipe at it using my dancing sword for a little bit of melee range in some right. way. And then directly right, direct so line to the red wizard. So 24 is a success. So you can take your full <laughs> movement to make your way to him. Nice, nice. Gun in for him. Fucking just, just. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so patience. So patience is going to because she's doing the because again, I mean she is gonna cast a spell first, if that's okay. Sure. So what it what is it you're trying to do? Um, she's casting far step to basically get the drop on this guy. Which guy? Oh, that guy? Mm -hmm. it teleport okay. It's a bonus action that teleports me up to 60 feet. Okay. So is that your skill that you're providing? Is it your arcana? Or what is it? She was casting a spell. Right, but, but this is... She but this what the she skill was challenge. I know. That's what I'm trying to get to. Okay. But what she was going to do was she was going to use athletics to... I guess in a not koala, but lock around this guy's neck and okay. pretty much drag him to the ground if she can. Okay. All right. So you're still gonna have to roll your d20 then for your spell casting. Yes. I love that. Uh, Twenty. Okay. So it was a one. The strength based character is using arcana, and their magic user is using strength. Crazy. Love it. All right, so you far step your way over there. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and roll me your roll me your skill. Choose your athletics. Okay, roll me your athletics. Oh jeez. Okay. Twenty three. That is certainly a success for athletics. Yep. She's proficient in it, so. So as you l are the most unwelcome backpack. <laughs> Spider monkey. Jesus, cat, you scared me. Exactly how Patience did to the Red Wizard. Yeah, yeah. She back, she backpacks while, oh my God. while he ran. Exactly. All right. Well, hello. 
Hello? Hello, cat. All right, so that is successes across the board. So, I'm going to ask Cordelia, what are we doing? Oh, uh, attacking. Okay. Go ahead, roll me your attack. Using the uh, rapier, the special rapier that Uncle Kyle gave, and the snakes are grabbing the dancing sword to make a swipe. Okay, go for Maybe. it. As a flare, I guess. Well, I don't know if this will hit. Uh, one is 19, but the that, second... That hits. Do you, do you... Am I doing, like, my full attack action and stuff? Like, two attacks and the bonus action for the dancing? Uh, just, I would say just roll me your uh, your attack rolls, and, if, and I'll say if they're both successes, then you are going to behead this dude. Well, okay. Well, uh, the basically, the first... First attack was 19, the other one is 13. Alright, so let me double check. Yeah, that hits. And I guess the dancing sword, if you want that too, that's a 23. Okay. So all Cordelia needs is a third sword to successfully Zoro this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So as you take your attacks, the dancing sword, like, flying in as you basically perform a perfect scissor cut and just decapitate the red wizard. Nice. Nice. Perseus, what are you doing next? Okay. Um, all right. Well, that worked. So uh, my next thought is who's the biggest... Toughest looking individual. Oh, I'd like to already use. Well, that's clearly uh, Eustace, but he's uh, not an enemy. Yeah, yeah. Um, athletics was used. So let's. Um... Let's. How about. How about. We do. Since it looks like my sister is taking care of the the people outside, um, I see burning buildings. What if there's people inside? Okay. Um, uh, can I either perception or survival to like see if there's anyone that needs rescuing? Like, does anyone inside the buildings um, uh, or like any? Um, that, that's my thought. Yeah. Anyone inside the buildings that I need to get out. Roll me perception. Okay. You rolled a 19, so I'm going to keep rolling you. What'd you get? Oh, fine. I'm going to put this in dice jail. Okay. So... I don't. You, I don't want to. Your even heart's in the right spot. You want it. to help. You want to look yeah. for anyone that's going to need your help as these buildings are burning away. Yeah. And you look to these blazing infernos, and they are just too hot and too intense. Like the fires are already crawling out the windows. You can't discern if there's anyone inside, oh. and if they were, they're not going to need your help anymore. I got too much fur. I'll burn up. Well, too toasty. <sighs> too toasty. Fuck. From it's fine, it's fine to if Uncle one. West does it uh -huh, because yeah. he doesn't have as much hair. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. you're gonna be chilly for a few days, and winter <sighs> is coming. So <sighs> winter. All right. Shit. My bad, guys. Okay, patience. What is your next move? Shit. Oh, we're going straight on intimidation. Okay, roll me your intimidation. What are we doing? She. So did she successfully drag you're... this guy down? Yeah, you have success. I wouldn't say completely dragged him down, but you are definitely grappled onto him like, you know, a very angry koala. And he is yeah. fumbling with his footing, so. It's a 25 for intimidation. Plus 9 to intimidation. How are we intimidating him? Yeah, 
she's just leaning a little bit close to this guy's ear and being like, "Are you familiar? You're a wizard. Are you familiar with the altar self spell? You want to know how I uh, ripped a guy's throat out? You want me to show you how I did it?" You don't have to alter <laughs> much patience for, for you. that. No. <laughs> you guys want to start a fight? <laughs> you gonna kill that guy for you? God. Ow! I just stabbed myself with my pen. Oh, don't do that. Yeah, and there's, is this guy, I guess, is, like, struggling. She's just like, sit down. Yep, he's falling down. He's going to be prone with you. All right, as by this point, the rest of Poundsguard are rushing in. They are surrounding everyone. Making sure that nobody, nobody's going anywhere. Okay. So, with that, uh, Hawk, are you ready for your questions? Yes, I sent them to Lark. Excellent. So, let's go back with that. As you guys have successfully secured the rest of town, as the guards are going to be corralling the wizards, and we will see where that goes from there. But next... Oh, uh, Cordelius, Cordelius, um, yes, vision, t cone visions to the next wizard. If nobody stops her, she will go for it. I mean, go ahead and roll me your attacks. If you get your successes, you get ahead. Oh, and I want to send you a secret message, DM. Okay, know. send me that secret message. Secret message. Okay, the the attacks are. Let's start with one attack for the rapier, and that was a twenty-four. That's a success. And let's skip the other rapier for now. Let's go to the dancing sword because it's a twenty-six. That's also a success. And I guess the second attack on a rapier was a twenty-eight for a nat twenty. So you are collecting. <laughs> Heads like it's no one's business. One for each snake. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Alright, so we got two wizards down. One down, but with patience on top of them. The guards are starting to finally get control. As eventually they work together, they are going to take down the rest of these guys. And they are going to make sure everything is dead and accounted for unless anybody specifically stops them for any reason. I mean, with the one guy that Patience has, she's like, no, no, I want to question this guy. Okay. But only that one? She's like, you can kill the other ones. I'm fine with this one. Okay. They're going to eradicate the rest of the undead. They're going to take care of the aberrations. Back with Lark and Hawk. So. Lark, as you are standing next to Hawk, you have your hand on his arm as mm -hmm. you're looking to his mother. As you see, see her in your mind. Okay. Uh, so he's going to be talking on behalf of Hawk. Okay. And first question. Do you know what was done to you and Helene? And he'll, he'll, all the answers he'll repeat back to Hawk. Okay. I don't know what was done to Helene, but... All I remember is pain. I remember staring at this at the ceiling for I don't know how long as they ripped me open with magic. They put things in that 
hurt and they I don't know what happened but I, I don't know how to understand it but they they were changing me in a way that was not right okay second question is is there anything here Hawk needs to find take or find Ooh. good one Oh, wow, that's something that was not thought of. Hawk used his noodle. He, he did use his noodle. For once. For once. Sad balloon noise. Oh. oh. <laughs> that sad kazoo song playing in the background. We didn't have much other than the earnings the earnings that I kept under my mattress. Those belong to him now. Him and Helene. Okay. Uh, next one is, can you forgive me for leaving you here? believe it'd be a fitting punishment. Yes, I, f I would forgive you. Okay. If it's possible, do you want to be revived? Yes. He's he's gonna look to where the hawk is with that answer. Hawk nod at him. Try. Okay. You will cast Revivify. Okay. Was that all your questions? I uh, it was four of them. Uh the the last one be like I uh, ask if she knows that I love her. <laughs> Don't cry. So you asked that, Larkspur? Yeah. I've always known that he loved me. I only hope that he knew how much I loved him. Okay. He's going to cast for Vivify. See if it okay. works. So, I pose the same questions to you. Are you you're casting this from a spiritual standpoint or a spell casting standpoint? Spiritual. He's going to call upon Ilmater to revivify this person who had been wrongly been done dirty, I guess, would right. be the best way to put that. Do Which is have, his, his domain. Do you have the 300 gold pieces worth of diamond? Hold on. Or he did. That's a, I, I'm, I'm going to go on blind faith here. We're going to see if it works. Okay. Roll me a religion. And Hawk, is there anything that you're doing while Larkspur is preparing his ritual? Hawk is just like, I, no, they like he's glancing between Lark and his mother's remains, just watching, like okay. intently. Okay. He got the same numbers last time, 18 plus 2. Okay. Roll me your percentiles again. Son of a bitch, I have to get my percentile again. 
<laughs> Me sitting over here with my golf ball. <laughs> 69, dude. Nice. <laughs> wow. I nice. call that like a success. <laughs> nice. the best, it's the best number, bro. 69, 69. dude. I'm trying to look something up real quick. So. All right. And Larkspur, how are you preparing this ritual? Let me see. Hold back up. It's a touch spell. With... So we've got touch. And then... Verbal, somatic, and material. So the material... Verbal, I think he's gonna... Um, he's gonna plead to his god. Okay for this and he will mention allow me to spare this life for the ones I'm going to take okay and you're saying that uh, you're saying that openly or to yourself it hushed under his breath but he will speak it out into the world okay I would say, Hawk, if you are trying to intently listen, that would be a perception from you. Since you were right next to him. And he do be listening right now, because he has wrapped attention here. That was a dirty 20. <clears throat> and he doesn't really care. Because at this point, Hawk is like, yep, yeah, same. There will be blood. There will be blood. Okay. So. Alright. Let me roll a thing real quick. Are we... That's the name. Okay. So... As Larkspur, you lay your hands upon uh, the metal. It is now cold to the touch. Uh, once, w What was once burning with like radiant fire, it's now just stone cold as it lays there in a heap. And you speak your prayer and your plea to your god, Ilmater. And you, um, you start to feel, you know... You you feel the spell flow through you as it's as it's expunged, and in your mind's eye you see this kind of weathered hand uh, next to yours as it just kind of like stiffly touches the metal, and you hear uh, you hear this voice this tired voice. Oh, my son. This might... This, this... Unfortunately, I feel... Is out of my hands. But... This one has been... Corrupted by magic older than I. So perhaps it is by that very magic that she can be saved. And as those words just kind of disappear into the wind... Hawk, I need you to roll me a I need you to roll me a Arcana. Okay. 
16. So, you hear this you hear this groaning noise as the metal starts to shift and rise up. Uh, the fire does, does not ignite in it. As this heaping mass of metal just kind of tries to pull itself up. Uh, bits of it broken and bent in as it raises itself off the ground only to start to collapse again. And uh, Hawk, you realize that this is not... You realize that this is not by the necromantic magic that uh, Larkspur had casted. As you had become familiar with its sense when he was casting his Speak With Dead spell. This doesn't... This doesn't smell of old earth. This doesn't feel like that comforting cold that comes with the close of life. You feel something else. And if anything, you feel the bracelet around your wrist start to vibrate. Okay. And you, you can feel that spark of magic kind of illuminating with your latest rune that you had been gifted. Um. Papa bless. Hawk, uh, give me. Stop it. Um. Where did I? Ah. Oops. Right here. Um. So. Yes. As Lark, what are you doing in this moment? I didn't know I was muted. Uh, nope. Is he still, like, in the Black Abyss? Yes, you are still in the Black Abyss as your, you know, your hand is touching uh, on the metal, but all you see in your mind is you're holding... Sorella's hand as her hand is entwined with yours um so if the vi if the bracelet starts vibrating now if he sees nothing is happening doesn't seem like it's working and the bracelet starts to vibrate he's gonna kind of sit there and oh. and he's going to ask the bracelet like it can talk um <clears throat> with every intention talking too um Bahamut. Like, is this something you can fix? We're only a religion. We are not the religious, but... Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Fourteen. Okay. So, you don't, obviously you don't get a verbal answer back, 
but you can kind of feel this bug on your wrist. As, hey. Uh, so, Larkspur, Sorella looks to you as she kind of has this far off gaze as she tells you thank you for trying but I think I think I'm wanted somewhere else now And she's going to uh, hold her hand out to her other hand out towards uh, where Hawk is standing. Like trying to reach for his wrist where his uh, bracelet is lighting up. He'll, he'll try to connect the two. Okay. So you... Uh, so you guide Hawk's hand towards, to, yeah, towards her. Okay. So Hawk, uh, Larkspur will take your wrist, and bring it to the uh, metal snout of the dragon. And once that connects, there is this spark that kind of goes off on the bracelet, like, and it almost sounds like similar to when. Uh, a hammer strikes the metal on the forge. And you watch as these draconic runes just kind of like run up the crest of this uh, construct. And it shudders. And it starts to collapse. And Larkspur, you watch as Sorella closes her eyes and breathes this sigh. And as she breathes this sigh, her image starts to fade. As she says, thank you. And the construct kind of falls in on itself. And as it crashes into dust, the uh, the bronze uh, plating of it crumbles away. And as it crumbles away, it just uh, it spreads and takes flight into what is a swarm of golden birds as they fly off into the sky. I thought you were going to say bees. Bees. <laughs> no. Swarming that, bees. That, that would be for Alina. Yeah. <laughs> as the construct is no longer in the area, but there is just a a cloud of golden canaries flying off into the sky. And Sorella is not there. Your mother is gone. He's going to start to cry again. And he's going to walk back into the house, touch the snout of the construct his father. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me roll a thing for that. It does nothing. You touch it and it's just you just hear the ping of your bracelet against the metal and it stays there. Hmm. I'm just gonna stare at it for a minute and just continuing to cry. As all you hear is just the sounds of the smoldering flames of what of the wreckage of your house, the creaking of the wood under your feet, and just the 
wind kind of rifling through the dying trees. He would go and take the things his mom told him about. Okay. And then he would look at Lark and be like, is there a right? Anything. That you can do for him. And he'll kind of look back in the house. Before I let the house burn down. Do you want me to do the same thing? Or I can say a prayer. A prayer. The best, I think. Well, I'll walk in there. Okay. Hawk Huck's sitting there like it'd be a lie for me to tell you that I wanted to bring him back. Okay. So you walk in there and offer your prayers. You don't get the same sensation that you did with Sorella. But you feel like, like do I get I get the feel, feeling that he's like dead. He's like actually dead. Like dead he's, dead. You you feel nothing from that as you try to as you kind of like open your mind to this creature as this dead thing as you try to offer it a prayer. You just get this sensation of cold emptiness. Just nod at that as he reties his his uh, ropes on his arms. He kind of leans forward and kind of pats on the construct thing. We shall see each other soon. Okay. What? <laughs> As he says that, uh, Hawk, you have collected 110 gold from your mother's... Uh, it's it's in a small little jewelry box. Um, it has like a couple of simple necklaces of hers. Just like tied up in a little um, a little leather bag. So. So you collect everything and let this home finish burning to the ground. Ollie waits for you uh, at the doorway as he just kind of looks to you, Lark, uh, just waiting for what, what your next move is. As he kind of like looks at you, then he looks at Hawk and he just like gives like a like a thumbs up or down, just trying to gauge the try, trying to gauge the uh, the vibe. Does he ask Hawk for a thumbs up or thumbs down? He's asking, he's kind of like asking both of you. He's trying to understand the vibe right now. I mean, Hawk is crying, so. She's slowly thumbs down. Okay. <laughs> just puts his hands behind his backs and just, back is just, just kind of rocks on his heels like, well. <laughs> so, what are we doing next? Are we heading into town to go collect everyone else and see what's up? Yeah. Did uh, did Hawk did Hawk start the fire? I'm already on fire, but the, he the, is not. The remains to burn are out. the remains are still on fire, so the house will continue okay. to burn down, as well as like any of like the surrounding woodsy area. So. We didn't start the fire. All right. So, if the plan is to head back into town, I will have you all reconvene at the Lucky You. As uh, Lark and Hawk, you kind of walk your way through the streets. You pass the uh, what 
you pass the aftermath of uh, Patience, Tarsius, and Cordelia's encounter as you see uh, undead just kind of scattered about on the streets dead. You see uh, these draconic uh, abominations just kind of also laying dead in the street, littered with like arrows and like gashes from sword marks. You don't see any survivors. As you also see uh, some red robes that belong to red wizards and their heads laying at their feet. You will also see the... Uh, Hawk, you do recognize a lot of the faces of those dead in the streets. You remember them from your like your whole life living in Binatuan. As you see, and even with the draconic, you know, abominations as well, they're even though their features just drastically, you know, marred by these ungodly changes, you recognize their faces. The only one that stands out a bit to you you see the corpse of the one priest that you had seen at the tavern that one time the priest of lathander as he's also amongst the uh now redeaded undead as you see uh the uh town's guard just kind of like collecting them into piles getting ready to burn the corpses Seeing that priest talk would like stop okay. for a second and look at him. And then look at Lark and be like, I guess he didn't disappear that well. No. You said he was from your home, right? Yes. What the? Hawk grass me to talk about anything that isn't this. What is your home? What do you mean? Like, place you grew up. The town called Vic? Uh, it was Ober. He'll say it's small town, Ober and Suspect. South of here. Uh, right, but is it a nice place? <laughs> <laughs> the snorts. <laughs> he'll he'll just snort at that. Hawk oh, will sit there and be like, "Has to be," like <laughs> broadly motioning to the burning city. <laughs> sure, nicer. This. <laughs> For now? Huh? For now. What do you mean? Don't worry about it. It's not your concern. I mean, I'm, I'm a little concerned. Uh... Do Did... the stuttering. <laughs> I know. Uh, I'm like on the spot for questions here. Um, Do you not... You don't like your hometown. This is coming from a place of someone who did not particularly like their own. I mean, I didn't dislike it enough for it to be on fire. 
but not a fan. And they were not a fan of me. So the feeling's mutual. No offense, you, you don't seem unlikable. I mean, don't get me wrong, you're, you're not uh, Mr. Congeniality, but I... You don't seem like a bad... He'll lean into Hawk right up to his ear and just be like, you don't know me very well. Hmm? And he'll walk away. He'll walk away. I want to be like, it's a good thing Hawk's parents just died because that. Otherwise, it would like, mm, no, do you no. want to? <laughs> um... Hawk is just going to stand there for a second and, like, get. <laughs> okay. Now's not the time, Hawk. We're tucking that away. Oh. We're freshly <laughs> traumatized, but we're tucking that away. Hawk is like, we can overthink about that later. All right. Um, and he'll just follow in the direction that Lark walked off. Wherever that was. All right. So, which I'm assuming you're all heading to the Lucky U. Since that yes. seems to be the last yes. place that is not on fire right now. Yeah. As let me ask, uh, Cordelia, Tarsius, and Patience, what are we all doing as we've reestablished ourselves at the Lucky You? Seeing if anyone needs help is, I guess, the primary yeah. thing first. Okay. Yeah. And then if there is any assistance that needs to be met or done. Mm -hmm. We'll see what we need to do. Alrighty, so let me get y'all on that map. Alright, so let me put you guys over here. This will be our last destination of the night. All right, so let's get y'all there. Uh, Bop. Oops, I, uh, I'm being called by the mother. So one okay. second, since this usually sure doesn't thing. happen. PRB. <laughs> All right, so everybody... Uh, the the remaining survivors of Binituin are all kind of huddled within uh, the lucky you. And Hawk, as you make your way in following after Lark, you get a grasp that that's not a lot of people. As you all have survived a very life-changing event. As your sister's uh, cat, I believe we named him Whiskers because it's the most unimaginative cat name. Patch Patches. That's right, Patches. Sits on the bar next to um, the seamstress's cats. So they're all just kind of comfortably loafed. Pav is pouring drinks for anybody that needs one. Perseus and Cordelia are aiding where they can. Patience, what are you doing? Um, when it right. came to the one wizard, um, they they took him to the back, uh, to the bedrooms, and they mm -hmm. are currently holding him. She's probably gonna go up to to to. As she's sitting on the bar and just kind of observing the scene. I have a quick question. Yes, sweetheart. Um, I know the this establishment tends to keep. I have a, I guess, a question. Do you, by any chance, happen to have? 
because I remember my papa talking about these. Any particular um, handcuffs of the variety that stop magical <laughs> abilities. Are you worried about your little wizard friend? Yes. Oh, honey, I have them set yeah. up in the perfect room for that. Okay, that's all I needed to know. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. That room. is all she's going to tell you. <laughs> so. Yeah. But I know that once she sees uh, Hark and. Uh, Hawk and Larkspur come in. Yeah, as you she's, all see them enter in. She's immediately probably going to run up and be like, you know, are you okay? Is everybody okay? You know what I mean? <laughs> Hawk is going to look at patience and then Make a non-committal shrug. Mm -hmm. And be like, I might be better after a drink. That, and that's start to walk over to the bar. That's understandable. <laughs> As uh, you walk over to the bar, uh, Misuna will see you. She sees you just kind of taps the bar behind her just like now honey you don't have to say a word other than what's your poison don't say lark <laughs> mm. lark spurt um oh. <laughs> oh, this poison oh. um it is poison you know what he could actually look at her and be <laughs> Give me the actual poison, please. <laughs> um, he'd be like, do you have that? We have beer and wine and... You know, we're gonna, we're gonna start you with something easy. We're gonna get you... Uh, we're gonna get you an ale. See how you feel about it. And we can work you up from there. Oh, he's already worked up. Um, <laughs> um, Put it away. <laughs> Your parents just like died. That. You, you, no, I don't mean like that. I mean worked up emotionally. Don't uh -huh. do that. Uh -huh. um, um. Hawk will, like, take a sip of whatever Puff hands him. Okay. And probably cringe. Yeah, it, it'll have uh, some notes of pumpkin in it because that's their seasonal brew for the, you know, for the fall seasons. He's going to take a big sip of it. This is awful. Um... Um... He's like, well, anybody that drinks it for the taste is just trying to impress people. Lark is going to uh, go up, sit next to Hawk. At the okay. Bar. Ollie's just going to sidle his way in and go just find a chair and just sit there. And he's going to just drum his fingers on the on the table. Um. <laughs> Patience is going to make her way over to this chair over here. Probably uh, take Gren with her, just so he can curl up on one of the rugs. Oh. Okay. I'm going to go over there. And she's going to reach into her bag, and she is going to pull out uh, her sending stone. Never mind. I'm not going over there at all. <laughs> Do what? She's I was like, like oh, I'm going to go over there. And then nope. she pulls out the sending stone. He's like, never mind. No, I'm not going over there at all. I'm over here. <laughs> all right. So you pull out your sending stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she's just going to speak into it. Just 
Um, who's by the stone right now? I'm gonna need you to roll me a d6. A d6? Oh boy. Because yes. I get to decide who's gonna be next. That's to the a four. Stone. Okay. I'm very excited for this one. Oh, you have this all prepped. <laughs> No, because I was like, I was secretly hoping this would be the one. <laughs> okay. So, who's by the Sending Stone right now? Um, she's just like, hello, who's by the Sending Stone right now? Since she's now known this has turned into the ca- tavern community phone. <laughs> Honestly. So Wes is like, leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it. So, <laughs> uh, on the other end, you hear... Hello, you have reached the office of Phoebus Tadawick. How may I address your call? Oh my god. Hey, Phoebus, it's oh. Patience. It's your cousin. Oh, hello. Hey, um, I have Salutations. a question. Salutations. Salutations. Is my big brother around? I don't know who that is, but I have a Basil. better question. I don't know who that is. I have a better question for you, though. You're just here. Just... <laughs> sure, what's the better? What's the question, Phoebus? I am going to need you to queer your calendar for <laughs> the winter yep. solstice. Do it. <laughs> because I am cordially inviting you to my birthday extravaganza. It will be a bow way. <laughs> oh, I was having my. <laughs> wow, I'm starting to do the voice too. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, you just here go. I would very much like to go to your birthday party. It's your on the soiree. winter solstice. Oh my god! Your soiree. My soiree. You will need it to all SVP. Yeah, please <laughs> all, all S- Please all SVP. <laughs> And presents are mandatory. You... <laughs> Her just mentally like, thinking there's something. You're going to be getting a bag full of buttons. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, but her just being like, we'll consider this my RSVP. Now. Like, so wait, how many in your party will be <laughs> attending? <laughs> I'll have to see what my brother's doing. Speaking of my brother, have you seen an older tiefling with yes, blonde MBA's hair? Yes, right next to me. No, an older tiefling with blonde hair around. You, you, you will hear the rock being wrestled out, and Zevi's like, "Hi, sorry." Yeah, and feep, feep, feep. Here, just take and take this, and he, he just hands him. You, you can already imagine he's handing him like some form of cheese, just. To shut him up. God. The whole, like the whole two pound block. Just please. Um, just take it. <laughs> <laughs> just a wheel. Hi. Sorry. Um, no, Basil's not in right now. Uh, do you need your dad? Or what? Sorry. I mean, no, may- maybe. Yeah. Or any, either of my dads available? Um, I think uh, one of them's here. You want to. Green one. Yeah. The moldy one. <laughs> it smells. For that. Huh? I'm gonna flip a coin for that. Yeah, it's the moldy oh, one. Geez. <laughs> <laughs> He's, you're fine. It's fine. <laughs> the moldy one or the neurotic one? Which one do you want? <laughs> so, e, your, uh, your green dad's here. I'll talk to him. Okay, sure. And he passes off the sending stone. And he's just here, why am I being handed this? Hey, Papa. Hello. Um, things went to hell in a handbasket here. That tends to be the trend. Um. She's just gonna tuck her hooves up, like, just to kind of, like, bunch yourself a little bit more into the chair a little bit and it's just is there something you need one of our one of um my friends um 
lost their sister, and I don't know what to do to help them. Well, I would say finding well, her might be a good start. Part. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't know if they're alive, though. Oh, well then you should probably leave them, then. Can't do anything about it if they're dead. Take, puts the, the stone in her lap and just takes a deep sigh. <laughs> and it's like, okay. Um, are, you, are you hurt? I, I feel better now. That's good. How are you feeling? So you just hear this long pause. <laughs> <laughs> I am here. Good. Okay. Um. For your friend. If their family is dead, then you should know that that is the way it is. It should be. Not that they deserve to die, but that that is just the nature of it. Get it. But if they are. What is the word? Misplaced. Then all you just have to do is simply go get them. Yeah. Um. I think that's going to be our next plan of action is to head to this wizard tower. It's like when you used to play hide and seek. When you were smaller. You tended okay. to pick good hiding spots that left your father panicked. <laughs> Off offhand comment when is dad not panicked? <laughs> I think you'll be okay. Great talk, Dad. Yeah. You are you are a very capable person. Thank you for not looking at looking me just as small child. You are also capable of finding the most complicated trouble like your father. What's that supposed to mean? It means whatever you're doing, <laughs> you're going to find a way to exceed, you know, the flow. Okay. I don't know what else you want me to say. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I guess whenever a chance, if you ever run into Basil, can you just, I don't know, I would like to talk to him. Okay, I will give him the rock when I see him. Okay. And then you don't hear anything else as he probably put the rock down and walked away. Yep, that sounds about right. Okay. So, as you all pretty much kind of relax into, you know, not dying, having to contemplate with what just happened, as everybody's just kind of recuperating themselves, you all will eventually, you'll all be, you know, offered your rooms to have a rest. Mm -hmm. And it's there where you all will level up. Yay. After having this encounter. Yeah. So, 
And with that, we will all turn in and end the game here and pick up where you guys decide what to do next. So. It was a short one today, but needed to muss through the feelings, so... Thank you all for playing through this trauma, and thank you all for watching. So we will see you all next time. So, alrighty. Going to do as Addy do and not say anything and walk away. <laughs> Irish Adios. goodbye. Yes. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.